Hello friends, welcome back to a new video. My name is Alex and today we're going to talk about logging incoming HTTP requests in your Spring Boot application. Previously, I've done a video on how you can log outgoing requests using an interceptor and that works with the REST template, with the REST client, with the web client. So today we want to focus on how can you actually log all the requests sent to your application. And initially I thought this would be a quick video but it took a little bit of effort to figure out how to actually make it work. So let's jump right in, let's code. All right, so we can see we are using Spring Boot version three as usual. I only brought in the start a web dependency because that's all that we're gonna need. And I wanna start with creating a REST controller. So we can see that the whole request response cycle is actually working before we start looking into the requests. So let's create a quick controller. I call this sample controller. This one's gonna be a REST. Um, REST controller, there we go, import. So, and I want to have a post mapping to sample and uh, we could just call it sample. And I also want to map a request and a response. So we have a sample request that has a name and I want to have a sample, where is it? Sample response. Now let's not make this a name, let's have a message that is returned. So we can make this type safe. So I have the request body, where is it? Let's see if that's correct, sample response. Can actually make, it's almost correct, what Copilot did here. We can make this a little bit shorter. So uh, import the request body, clean this up. So we have a post mapping and we just expect someone to send a request with the property name and the actual value. And then we just greet them by returning hello, whatever the name was that they provided us initially with. Now let's start the application and quickly make sure that this works. So application has started, let's go to the terminal and let's use HTTP um, to port 8080 sample and we say name equals Alex. So we can see this has worked. The post request is received by the application. We get an okay. And this is the response, right? Message, hello, Alex, which is pretty much what we had added here. And what I wanna do now is lock that actual request and see that payload. So let's stop here and go to the app. So since Spring is heavily making use of filters, we could now provide our own filter to begin with, but I always prefer having existing solutions that we can just use because the existing code is usually battle tested, has less bugs, and that's why I prefer that. And there's something that we can already use. So there is, before we start doing something ourselves, there is already an existing component and that's called the comments request logging filter. So we can create that here, comments request logging filter. So let's take a quick look. If we look into the class, we can see the comments request logging filter has two major methods. Um, it's before request and after the request and it just locks a message that has been provided here. And the comments request logging filter extends the abstract request logging filter. So we're gonna look into this a little bit later, but let's quickly configure this. So we said, to include the headers, I want to log pretty much everything. So I can say the headers um, include client info, filter set include payload. That's gonna be important. And set include the query string. So I want everything to be locked. I re return the filter. And I think I also have to increase the logging to actually make it work. So I put this into the application properties, debug logging enabled. This should now add this filter to the spring context. So if I start the application now again, you can see it started. Let's go back and submit our request. It works, right? So the request has been sent. So let's check the console and we can see here, it says before request, after request, these are the two methods that we saw. They are just working as they should. Where's the mouse? There it is. So, but now there's something that we can see here. So you can see the payload is available, but only after 
the request has been handled. And this is actually the tricky part that took a little bit of time because the logging filter is not able to access the payload because if it reads the payload, it is considered consumed. So once the payload then makes it to the REST controller, it's no longer able to extract the response and that will give us an error. So we only see that after the fact. But this is of course a little bit unfortunate because if the request controller fails to handle the request, then we most likely will not see that logging here at all. So what I wanna do is see the payload before it reaches our controller. So we have to make this work somehow to consume the request body while still leaving it available to the application to consume it itself. So this sounds a little bit more complicated than it should be, but here's what we're gonna do. We will write our own filter that is similar to the comments request logging filter that extends the abstract request logging filter. Man, these names are so long. So it's gonna be an abstract request logging filter, but we will make sure that we can consume the input stream, like the, the payload, multiple times. And I give credit where credit is due because this is not my solution. I really tried a couple of solutions, but let's go quickly to GitHub. So there is this old issue on Spring Framework where this problem has been described, that the stream had been closed. Um, and there's a solution that has been provided here. And I link to this down below. It's this one where we can have a repeatable content caching request wrapper that's just making sure that the input stream can be consumed multiple times. So we come back to this in a bit, but let's kick off the filter. So I close all of that. So we say goodbye to the comments request logging filter because there's really not, not a lot of customization that we can apply here. So we have to introduce our own filter. So we just call this logging filter. So I make this a component, so it's added to the spring context. And then once per request filter. Yeah, so I actually said we're gonna extend abstract request logging filter, but since we need to apply changes here, we cannot extend that directly. Instead, we're gonna use the once per request filter, which is a little bit higher up in the hierarchy. So this is a once per request filter. Now we have to implement our filter function. And I already know that we're gonna need a lock because that's the whole point of this video. Lock equals logger factory get logger logging filter so we have it here uh like to call this chain not chain chain but chain now let me first show you what happens if we just try to apply logging directly to the request that we're getting here so i have to invoke um chain to filter eventually to get the response so let's try accessing um the body directly so i can go request um input stream uh, read all bytes to string character sets. Oh, that's not correct. So now character sets UTF-8 body. That should be the body. And I can log info body. So let's do this. So I'm logging the body and we get to logging the request headers, etc. in a moment. But I want to show you that I'm now consuming the request in here in this logger and then passing it on further down the chain. Eventually the request should arrive at a controller. Let's see if that works. So I can now just start the application, start it successfully. Let's go to the terminal, clear that up a little bit. And now we just make our same request. So we can see that it does no longer work. You can see it's a bad request. So let's actually check the logs. We can see here our logger has access to the body and this has worked. But then down here we can see message not readable exception. This is because we now consumed the payload and it's no longer available for the controller. So we have to make sure that we buffer this somehow. And let's actually add the solution from the GitHub ticket. So we need to wrap the actual request in a new type. So let's go back to Chrome. Um, I'm using that solution here because that has worked. So you can see I'm using that. Let's go to the IDE. That's Java, I paste it in here and let IntelliJ take care of it. So now we have it um, that's unfortunate because is is reserved. So I have to rename that whole thing to stream. But other than that, that should look good. So we have a request wrapper that actually expects the request. I think it's safe to assume that's not null. And initially, once that class is instantiated, it just drains the input stream. So it reads from the input stream initially. So we have the request body. Um, and then we can still make sure that it can be called multiple times without losing the payload. So 
let's make this a little bit smaller. So we have that here. And what we can now do is call a wrapper. And this is the repeatable cache content caching request wrapper. We put in the request. And now we have to make sure this thingy is extending the content caching request wrapper, which itself is servlet request wrapper, which then implements the HTTP servlet request. So that means we use that wrapper here and pass that down here, right? So we make sure that the other filters can access that cached um, input stream. And now the fun part begins. So we start with a string builder to build the actual long message. Let's clean that up and we are over here. So now we can say builder append line. Um, so we're starting a new request. That should actually be a string. Where is that? There we go. And then we append a new line with the, um, what is it? The wrapper method. And here we want the request URI. And then we go over the header names as iterator for each header builder append line. And that's a header and the actual value of the header. Then we append an empty line for better readability. And now here is the magic builder append line wrapper content as string. And I think that's actually pretty new. Content as string is only available as of Spring Framework 6.1, but it's really convenient. So we get the whole content as a string here. And of course, now we have to log it. Log info builder to string. We no longer need to read the body here. I've also done this. And that wraps up the filter. So we can see we log the request, the method, the URI. We go over all of the headers and then we read the content as string and then let the downstream filters take care of the request using our wrapper. Now let's see if that works. So I start the application again, it starts up, which is nice. Um, clearing this, performing the request and it works again. So the request succeeds, we get the reply from the REST controller and checking our lock, we can see, let's make this bigger. Here it is, the request. It says post to sample, here are all the headers and it even includes the payload. So this is how you can lock incoming HTTP requests using a dedicated filter. Again, I relied on a solution here provided on GitHub. I still hope that was useful. Thanks for watching, consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.